Humankind will return to the moon's surface for the first time in over 50 years. This time for good maybe, thanks for SpaceX's new vehicle, Starship. Starship will usher in the next phase of manned spaceflights and exploration, allowing us to construct permanent colonies on the Moon, Mars and beyond, based on the lessons learned from the Dragon spacecraft and Falcon rocket flights. But this strikes a whole lot of questions. What will people eat? How about refuelling? What about safety and security? Will there be trained individuals to deal with such situations if something happens, or someone aboard the ship feels sick, or someone destroys something in the ship itself? In today's video, we will look at the options on how Starship will handle life support once it embarks on the journey to Mars, the Moon and beyond. But first, before we go on with today's video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and don't forget to leave a thumbs up. So let's get into it. Life support systems are an essential component of deep space settlement and survival, which is one of SpaceX's key priorities. As we travel deeper into space, a starship will provide a safe haven for humanity, as life support is essential for survival inside the deep space habitat. According to SpaceX CEO Elon Musk's 2016 Starship concept, the vehicle will carry well over 100 people per flight, with eventual aspirations to carry up to 200 passengers. It is undeniably extraordinarily huge, coming in at a monster 120 metres in height and a weight of 5,000 tonnes when carrying the maximum payload. That's astounding! While the spaceship is not yet in its final form, it is around the same size as it will be when completed. So what does SpaceX intend to do with all of this space? They can squeeze in some satellites in there for a few Starlink launches or sell some room to businesses. But what about passengers? Let's have a look at how the interior of the Starship is designed to sustain life on board. SpaceX states in the user guide that the Starship's crew arrangement include private cabins, big common areas, centralised storage and solar storm shelters. SpaceX will also have a spaceship with a dedicated crew arrangement. Starting with private cabins, SpaceX has a lengthy list of different accommodations and arrangement modifications. A Dragon 2 only has 9.3 cubic metres of pressurised volume, which is only 0.85% of the entire capacity of a Starship. So, even with the overall capacity of a Dragon 2 capsule at 9.3 cubic metres, the Starship would only require 465 to 700 cubic metres of its payload volume if we're looking at approximately 50 to 75 private cabins with two or three passengers in each. So that's 42 to 64% of the volume of the Starship's pressurised payload, leaving 36 to 58% for open spaces, additional shelters, restrooms, storage, life support and other things. Yeah, a lot of numbers, but it shows how huge Starship actually is. If you had a chance to go to space with Starship being one of, say, 100 people, would you go and why? Let us know in the comments. When it comes to cabin rooms, a lot isn't always taken into account, but bathrooms are surely included. Obviously, we don't know whether there are public bathrooms in halls or individual room bathrooms. What we do know is that they must all be connected and flow to waste management and water reclamation centres, where waste may be disposed of and water can be filtered and reused. Musk would also have to incorporate enough food in the Starship stores. Would this take the form of a central food bank, cafeteria or both? With the amount of room left unfilled by individual cabins, it might go either way. Would everyone receive food for their time on the Starship? Let's take a look at how general life support might operate and how it might even fit on a Starship. After all, you can't devote the entire pressurised volume of the ship for living quarters. Fortunately, SpaceX has been looking at this issue for quite some time. So whereas many people disregard life support on Earth until it's too late, SpaceX is already working on it. In fact, as shown in the June 4 Twitter post by user Toby Lee, the company was attempting to hire Starship medical engineers months ago. In this tweet, images of two job listings, a Starship medical engineer and a radiation effects engineer for use aboard the Starship were required. 
The corporation characterised the radiation effects engineer role as involving the study, design and testing of the system's design to prevent fluctuating radiation levels as well as collaborating with other development teams to integrate protection on Starship. Both of these posts are extremely interesting because now we know that Starship plans to have dedicated specialists on board the Starship in order to maintain stability and a smooth flight. The most important takeaway is that SpaceX is now highly committed to constructing the best life support system aboard Starship. Air regulation, water, oxygen supply, waste disposal, temperature control, pressure regulation and even food supplies and rations will likely be the most common use of pressurised space, excluding the rooms. There's a lot that goes into what's commonly thought to be just simply breathing oxygen in and out. Of course, life support is much more complicated, with hundreds if not thousands of individual aspects and small items all working together to keep the crew alive. This will also consume a lot of power, limiting even more of the usable space aboard the Starship to the essentials. After all, a Starship will provide a completely pressurised volume in addition to the human demands. Waste disposal, water filtration and much more are all available. As a result, this will almost certainly constitute a significant use of the vehicle's entire volume. However, while most spacecraft rely on refillable oxygen tanks that are pressurised to hold high amounts of breathable air, there was a rising justification for using onboard oxygen generation. There will be a lot of spent air aboard the spacecraft because hundreds of people will be living in open spaces for weeks if not months at a time. Furthermore, the average human requires 660 litres of oxygen each day, implying that SpaceX would require a significant amount of onboard oxygen or a huge generator. Fortunately, the technology behind the ISS's oxygen creation is relatively small and easily accessible, and the space station has been manufacturing oxygen for years through a process known as electrolysis, which separates water into hydrogen and oxygen. By combining the newly acquired hydrogen with the carbon dioxide emitted by each crew member, water and methane can be produced. This water can obviously be filtered and used for human consumption, with the methane going towards the Starship's fuel supply. However, this method isn't without flaws, because there is still a significant gap between demand and generation. SpaceX would have to devote a portion of its onboard volume of oxygen, water and other life-sustaining supplies. This would most likely be kept in the Starship's centralised storage or a separate compartment shut off from the rest of the crew. The centralised storage could be used for personal items, extra oxygen supply, water sources and basically anything else SpaceX wanted on board. It would also most likely function as a gathering place for the onboard crewmates with many common areas to pick from. These common areas are likely to be set up similar to those seen on cruise ships, which often includes multiple gathering areas. While this isn't necessarily a common compromise, it makes sense. Cruise ships are likewise masses, with similar life support systems but no oxygen production, limited storage room and more to support life in the vast oceans. And that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching. How do you think life on the Starship will be? And would you give up life on Earth to live in space? Comment below. Also, if you are interested in more videos like this, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. Goodbye, see you in the next video.